Hi there, and welcome back to our series of lessons on the parts of speech. My name is Ganesh, and this lesson is all about nouns. In this lesson, we will learn about the different kinds of nouns there are in English, and we will also look at some rules to keep in mind when using them. Uh, we will first talk about concrete and abstract nouns, and then we'll look at common and proper nouns, which are a very important area. Then we'll discuss the very interesting collective nouns. And finally, we'll turn to the most important topic relating to nouns, and that is countable and uncountable nouns. Before we start, just remember, for any questions, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll talk to you there. Okay, so first of all, what is a noun? I'm sure you know the answer to this. A noun is just the name of a person, place, animal, thing, feeling, or idea. For example, in this sentence, Graham likes to go to the zoo and see the animals. Here, there are three nouns. Can you identify all of them? The nouns are Graham, a person, zoo, a place, and animals. Nouns can also be things like watch, t-shirt, etc. And all of these people, places, animals, and things are physical. That means we can see them and we can touch them. So they are called concrete nouns. That means they have a real physical existence. So what are abstract nouns then? Abstract nouns are nouns that don't have a physical existence. That means we cannot touch them or see them. And these are ideas and feelings. Now in this sentence, honesty is the best policy. It's a very popular proverb in English. Have you heard of that? Uh, in that sentence, honesty and policy are both nouns, but they are abstract nouns. And in this next example, Love is a powerful emotion. Love is the name of a feeling like anger, happiness, or sorrow, and love is a noun. Emotion is also a noun. Okay, let's now talk about common and proper nouns. Do you know what common and proper nouns are? A common noun is a general noun, and a proper noun is the name given to a specific individual. For example, in this chart, all the nouns on the left are common nouns and all the nouns on the right are proper nouns. For example, man is a common noun because it can mean any man. But Ganesh is the name of one man, one individual, which in this case is me, of course. So Ganesh is a proper noun. Woman, in the same way, is a common noun. It could be any woman, but Allison is the name of an individual, so a proper noun. In the next two, city and country are common nouns, but Hamburg and China are the names of one city and one country, so proper nouns. Okay, now let me ask you a question at this point. Do you notice something about the proper nouns? You should be noticing that they're all written with a capital first letter. And that is actually a rule in English. Proper nouns are always written with a capital first letter. In university, for example, when we talk about universities in general, we use it as a common noun. So the whole word is written in lowercase. That means in small letters. But when we're talking about a specific university, like the University of Chicago, notice that both the U in university and the C in Chicago are capitals. That's because it's a proper noun that refers to one specific university. Okay, there are more examples on the screen, but I want you to focus on the last two, uh, day and month. With the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we always write them with the first letter capitalized because they are proper nouns. And it's the same thing for months as well. From January to December, all months are written with a capital first letter. So please don't forget this rule. Proper nouns are always capitalized 
are always written with the first letter capitalized. Okay, let's now turn to the really interesting collective nouns. Collective means something like collection. And a collective noun is the name given to a group of people, animals, places, or things. I say that these are interesting because there are a lot of collective nouns in English and they can be very interesting to learn. Let's look at some common examples. A group of players is called a team. A, a team is a collective noun and it means a group of players or it could even mean a group of workers in a company. Actually, there's another word for a group of workers or employees. Can you guess that word? That word is staff. In the same way, on the screen I have some more examples, but I want you to guess the collective nouns before I show them to you. What do we call uh, a group of students? A group of students is a class. What about a group of criminals? A gang. A group of soldiers is an army. What about a group of onlookers? Onlookers means, let's say there's been an accident on the road, like there's been a car crash. Onlookers are the people that stand uh, around the a scene and they want to see what's happening. So what do you see? What do you call a group of onlookers? We call them a crowd. Did you get that one? There are also collective nouns for animals. For example, uh, a group of wolves is called a pack and wolves are very dangerous when they're in a pack. Uh, a, a group of bees is called a swarm. If you ever see a swarm of bees coming towards you, please run because they can sting really hard and it hurts very, very bad, okay? All right, there are also collective nouns for things. Like if I have five or six keys in my hand, do you know what we call that? We call it a bunch of keys. What about two shoes? A pair. And um, when there are stairs, that you have to take from one floor of a building to the next floor. Do you know what we call that? It's called a flight of stairs. Okay, so like I said, these can be really interesting, but there's one problem. Collective nouns can be difficult because there's so many of them. So what can you do? Well, there are two things that you can do. First, you can learn the most common collective nouns. Uh, the examples that I just showed you are some very common collective nouns. So if you learn the most common ones, then you can use them fluently in conversation. But sometimes you might be in a situation where you want to use a collective noun, but you don't know it or you cannot remember it. Like let's say you want to say a gang of criminals, but you cannot remember that word gang. So what can you do? You can just use a word like group, a group of criminals, and your meaning will be clear. Or you can say a bunch of things. The word bunch is um, a, a common collective noun, like a bunch of bananas, for example. So these kinds of expressions, common collective nouns, and even quantity expressions like a lot of, some, etc., if you use them, your meaning will be clear. But one reason to learn collective nouns is that if you use the correct collective noun in a situation, it will make your speech sound stylish. So try to learn as many as you can. Okay. All right. Let's now move on and talk about the most important area relating to nouns, and that is countable and uncountable nouns. That's why I've underlined in red because they're so important. Um, do you know the meaning of countable noun? A countable noun is a noun that can be counted and an uncountable noun cannot be counted. Some common uh, countable nouns are book, pen, man, spoon, building, elephant, etc. With all of these, we can use numbers or plurals to talk about them. We can say two books, five pens, three buildings, etc. If there's only one, 
we can use a or an. I have a book. There's an elephant standing over there, etc. But uncountable nouns are nouns like water, coffee, air, salt, sugar, love, advice, and so on. And just by seeing them, you should be able to say there's no way to count them because water and coffee are liquids. Air is a gas. Salt and sugar are so small that if you try to count the individual particles, that would be an extremely difficult task. And love and advice are abstract nouns because they are feelings and ideas. So most abstract nouns are uncountable. So with uh, uncountable nouns, we cannot use plurals and we cannot use a and an. That is very important. But we can use units to talk about quantity. For example, we can say a glass of water or two glasses of water two glasses of water, six tablespoons of sugar, or a cup of coffee, five cups of coffee, and so on. Or we can use units of volume or weight, like pounds, kilograms, ounces, and liters. This is how we talk about the quantity of uncountable nouns. To ask questions, we use the expression, how many, with countable nouns, like how many computers do you have in your office? And with uncountable nouns, we use how much. How much water is there in the bottle? Or how much sugar is there in the jar? Now with any of these questions, if you know the exact answer, you can give it. You can say, there are 20 computers in my office, or there's half a liter of water, okay, or four pounds of sugar in the jar. But what about if you don't know the exact number or quantity? In that case, you can use quantity expressions. With countable nouns, we use a few to mean a small number. I can say, oh, there are only a few computers in my office. I don't know the exact number, but it's a small number. Or I can say, um, there's only a little water in the jar. So with uncountable nouns, we use a little. This is very important. And what about to talk about a big number or a big quantity. Can you tell me what we use? With countable nouns, we use many or a lot of. There are many computers in my office or there are a lot of computers in my office. With uncountable nouns, we can use much, but that's less common. It's more common, once again, to use a lot of. Like, there is a lot of coffee uh, in the cup. So notice that a lot can be used both with countable and uncountable nouns. In the same way, the word some can also be used with both types. For example, uh, some computers in my office don't work. That's some number, but I don't want to say the number or I don't know the number. In the same way, we can say there's some tea left in the glass. Some tea is some quantity but I don't know the quantity. So with both countable and uncountable nouns, we can use a lot of and some. Okay, now I want to tell you about an area where a lot of students make mistakes, so pay close attention. And this is when we want to make comparisons. We're going to take a couple of examples. Let's say that in my neighborhood, that is, in the uh, place where I live, there are five buildings. In your neighborhood, there are 10 buildings. So we can say that there are more buildings in your neighborhood, okay? Just keep that in mind. And let's take another example, this time uncountable nouns. Uh, I drink two cups of coffee a day, but you drink four cups of coffee a day. So you drink more coffee. Okay, so far, so good. But what about the opposite? We can say that I drink less coffee. All right, but back to our first example, we said there are more buildings in your neighborhood. That means in my neighborhood, there are fewer buildings. This is where a lot of people go wrong. 
People say there are less buildings in my neighborhood. That is grammatically incorrect because with countable nouns, you cannot use less. You have to use fewer to compare. Okay, so remember these rules and remember not to make the common mistakes that we discussed here. All right, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned today. We started with concrete and abstract nouns. Remember that concrete nouns have a physical existence and abstract nouns are ideas and feelings which we cannot touch or see. Then we spoke about common and proper nouns. What is the important rule with proper nouns? You always capitalize the first letter. Then we turn to collective nouns. Remember to learn as many collective nouns as you can because that will help you to speak with more style. And finally, we looked at countable and uncountable nouns. We discussed a number of rules. Remember that the most common mistake is using less with countable nouns. It's wrong. Less is used with uncountable nouns. Fewer is used with countable nouns. All right, so that brings us to the end of this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next lesson.